Okay. This movie has a lot of great moments it's, in it. <laughs> this, this is the budget problems where I was like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me get this right. For our main villain, is it Kane, right? You are yeah, willing. Kane. You are willing to afford for champagne in yeah. every, every scene, scene he's in. Nina, you look beautiful oh, this evening. Thanks. How are you? Well. Ready when you are, Meg. Every scene he has, has a bottle of champagne. champagne. Yeah, got them champers. <laughs> in this scene, in the in the cemetery, all the tombstones are fake. Yeah, made of styrofoam. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the 79th episode of Good, Better, Bad, Bad, the show we watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Chiligo, the other host, Mr. Kyle Hatton. Kyle? I have questions. I don't have answers, but I have bird sounds. <laughs> this is, this film is entirely stock sound. Yeah. The movie. Y'all. The sound effects in this movie are the best thing about this. And there are two. There There's two. Eagle screeching and knife whipping knife noise. <laughs> Eagle scream, knife, oh, and the gun cock. There's a gun reload that they use a lot in this film. Uh, but yes, uh, so this one is a uh, rough cut. You don't say. Apt description uh, in the title uh, of the film. Uh, 1994 film by Sean Donahue, written and directed and produced. Um, Always a good sign. Yes. Uh, the whole thing's available on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if it's there legally or if it's just however, but it is on YouTube and you can watch it there. Uh, Get into all this glorious VHS quality. Yeah, yes. Uh, you can see the, the fucking closed captioning or whatever, or the, the encoding for the audio on the side where it's <laughs> like, because it's in this. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, it's the quality is pretty terrible, but uh, the film is something. So let's talk about it. Kyle, uh, intro. So the credits roll at the beginning and it says a bottom line studios production. And Everything I'm like, is, this film is meta as shit. Right? It's a credits. Right. It's I was great. like, bottom line productions. Yep. That's about right. <laughs> Call your film rough cut. Yeah. Yeah. Rough cut by bottom line studios. Opening shots of the credits though are over a, a, a jewelry store. And that's what rough cut is pertaining to is diamonds. Mm -hmm. We find out eventually. Um, this has to do with diamond thieves. And boy, the 90s hit you hard and fast in this one. The fashion. Oh, oh God, the fashion. Oh, okay. boy. When at any point, and I, I, I know this, this happened in like Saved by the Bell, but like with with guys with like nearly acid washed jeans who wear shirts that are four sizes too, too big, big for them oh and they tuck goodness. them into the yes. jeans <laughs> so it they're... looks so weird it's the fucking dumbest everybody in this movie looks like jerry seinfeld in his puffy shirt <laughs> It is uh, like specifically our main character at one point is wearing a super white billowy shirt and it looks I was like he's got the puffy shirt um, but yeah holy shit tucking I, those giant t-shirts into skinny uh, acid wash jeans with the waist up to your fucking tits. I can't believe that's what fashion was. Dude, was. well, and nobody's suit fits them. Everybody's suit jacket is like eight sizes well, too that's big. Well, explainable by a short budget. Yeah, well, yeah. I, well, but I, everybody brought their own clothes, I would assume. Which, which we will get to budget things because I have things to talk about with is the Is there budget. a budget thing? No, uh, oh. Of what, what they won't spend money on and oh, what they will spend yes, money on. Yes, it's pretty rough. <laughs> So we are introduced to the the main villain, uh, Kane is his name, um, and he's like a diamond guy, and he's at a party, 
some stuff happens, doesn't matter. Uh, but somebody stole some diamonds from him and leaves and, and is running away, and we get a car chase. Uh, and at one point, I love that during the car chase, one of the bad guys is like shooting out the window, and then he yells back to the other bad guy, Crank it! I love this tune! Crank it! I love this tune. Cause like there's a song on the radio and he's like, turn that up while I'm shooting my oh, gun. Man, he's a wacky henchman. <laughs> yeah. Which the henchman in this movie, there's two in particular, yes. but one in really one in particular, Blade, who is boy. Blade. You call me Blade. I want to be called Blade. By the way, is there a particular thing that was in the early nineties with the other guy? Is it Luke? I think so, yeah. Uh, where, the karate fighting yeah, guy. Yeah, where just guy, where every single person looked like Steven Seagal, kind of. Yeah. Where they I, have the ponytail going. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was very much, uh, since he, we find out later in the movie that he like is a karate guy, a martial arts guy. With no explanation or, or, or setup for that. He yeah. just, at the end of the movie, is like, Hah! and I'm like, wait, what's going on? And then, so they hop out and they're shoot. There's a massive shootout, and everybody is shooting their guns like idiots. They're like, one guy has oh, two God. guns. Man, this is and gangster. He's holding one, one normal and one sideways. And then the other guy, which I've never seen this before, which there's a lot of sideways holding of guns in this movie. But the other guy at one point is shooting his gun like this. I've never seen that. He has his gun turned like this. I'm like, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> All right, cool. This film is aneurysm inducing. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, every time the blade spins his fucking knife. It makes a noise. The, it makes the exact same noise. It does. It's a classic swoosh. Swooshing. 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 Yeah. And it makes, it, it, they couldn't get two different ones. They have the one sound. And it happened over and over and yes. over. So they're chasing Bob, who stole the diamonds. We find out. Um, and at one point, they, we cut back to the party, and I didn't understand what this was. They're like interrogating, uh, like their guard got knocked out, and when they stole the diamonds. What the hell happened? I don't know. One minute I was awake, and the next minute someone, someone came up from behind. And he got knocked out next to like a fermentation tank. Yeah, it looked like they it looked like a wine brewing. Yeah, thing. yeah. Was that supposed to be the safe or the vault? What the hell happened? Because he was like the guy guarding the diamonds, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering if they like tried to pass off a fermentation tank as like a vault. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? I don't know. Or or if they just happened to be in because they were probably filming it at like a winery. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they just like went to the basement like this is kind of cool. But yeah, like, I don't understand what club they had. Yeah. Yeah. To. But I don't understand why it's why it's next to a fucking fermentation tank. It's so strange. It's not right on foot. We're chasing Bob. He's got the diamond. Son of a bitch. You stay with him. Get yourself together. I'll talk to you later. Tomorrow. And then we get, uh, at the same time, our two main characters, or not our two main characters, our one main character and his friend, Polly, are hunting. Out in the same area where Bob is running away with the diamonds. The only good news is that Polly died very quickly. Polly dies very soon because Polly is annoying. <laughs> He's an idiot. Uh... Where is he? And then so they finally catch Bob. Uh, Kane comes out. They catch him. And I, I don't understand this. At one point, Bob screams. Let's go. And that's, everybody hears that, and then that's how they find him. Mm -hmm. But we don't ever know why he just randomly yeah. screamed. Yeah, I was like, what, did he fall? We Let's go. I guess, but we don't see that happen. He just screams, and we're like... All right, and then and then they're like, ah, we got you. Gary, what was that? Sound like a man scream. And a great line as he kills, as Kane kills him. You know your problem, Bob. You know what your trouble is, Bob. 
Please don't. You got no heart. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Man, um, that intimidating villain. Yeah, the villain in this movie uh, is... I, I was, like, convinced for half the movie that it was fucking Ric Flair. Whoa! Like, he, <laughs> yeah, he looks like Ric Flair. And I love, too, after he shoots him, the, the uh, Polly's Polly. like, oh, no! 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 And then, the, so now they're being chased. It's, like, awesome. Thank you. And as they're being chased, the Kyle, what the fuck? What the fuck? What is the? What I is this? Ca- okay, there, there, there is nothing but eagle screeches the entire time. So many eagle screeches! It's non-stop. It's the most nuts. There thing. might be more than Birdemic. <laughs> There absolutely is because it doesn't stop. I thought I was like going crazy. I was like, wait a second, what's happening? It's every, it just. Give me. I, here, look, it just never this stops. This is a super cut of eagle screeches. Oh my God, it, it, it's just. They are, they're rolling down this hill in the yeah, dumbest way. Yeah, it, it, just, it, it looks goofy. It's, it's not an exciting chase scene. Um, but I love, too, as they fall off this cliff, they, like, kind of fall off a ledge or something. And as they fall off, each of them comes by the camera. And, and each one, there's a eagle, eagle scream. And I was like. <laughs> Assassin's Creed? Did you steal this? Like <laughs> are they, are they, Their leap of faith? Or yeah, that? yeah. I was like, did Assassin's Creed steal the eagle sound when you fall off a ledge from this fucking movie? Holy shit. But yeah, every time somebody falls, it's like, wah, wah. I'm like, all right, great. Uh, and then randomly there's a dude repelling and I thought it was just some guy repelling. No. No, it's right, a bad it's guy. After them. Who we never saw have, why do they have repelling equipment? I don't know. <laughs> that, that's why I was like, why do these guys have this? I don't, none of it makes any sense. All the, so, many, so many things in this movie just happened with zero setup. I mean, the biggest thing is that our hero of the movie, Kyle, why is he able to murder everybody? Explain why the main character is like a super special ops guy. No, isn't he? Just, he's just a radio DJ. He's just a radio DJ, Kyle. What? He's, a, he's a radio DJ whose hobby is martial arts. Yeah, why can he? Is his hobby martial arts? Did they say that? Maybe. I don't know. That's the only way to make sense out of it. Well, he's like snapping everybody's necks and like one shotting everybody in the movie. And I'm like, yeah. why is he able to do any of this? It, He is, he is death reincarnate, yeah. just walking amongst people. It just, just He's a radio DJ, Kyle! He lays waste <laughs> to that one. He's a radio DJ! Why can he kill everybody? I don't understand it. Tie yourself up, man. What you want me to do what? Tie yourself up, we have to repel down, come on. They catch Polly. They pull him up the cliff <laughs> in a great way. Yeah, they because they use the rope. They're gonna use the rope to get down, and Polly ties it around his waist, and then they tie it to a bumper up top and drag him back up Whee! the cliff. But we don't see it again. Th- one of the biggest problems with this movie that keeps it from being truly great is that I, th- I guess probably because of budgetary reasons, there's a lot of cool things that happen that we don't get to see. You know what I yeah, mean? Like yeah. there's things that are like, oh, I wish we could have seen that. But we don't because there, I think not only that there, there's some pacing issues that kind of put yeah. me to sleep at yeah. one point. Dad missed you. I just came from the cemetery. I didn't know I'd feel so bad, you know, not being there for Polly. It's a little more than Polly, Carrie. But like this, where they tie him to the bumper, 
we get a half second shot of him like, oh, kind of going up a little bit. And then he's just up on top of the yeah. cliff. Whereas it would be great if you had a little bit more money and time, get a stunt man, get a wide shot and see him being drug up the cliff. And, and you know it's, not what like I mean? the, it's not like they couldn't have just done that and then sped it up. I mean, while right. they were rolling down the hill, it yeah. was sped up. And yeah. It looked awful. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, it's one of those things, it's like, you guys got to put a little more effort in, and then I would like your movie a little bit more. Um, so they catch Pauly, uh, and then they throw him off the cliff. But as he's falling, he snags the bag of diamonds. You just invited us to your funeral. What? And then pulls it out, and then falls off the cliff and dies. Whee! Uh, so Gar uh, Garrett now has the diamonds. Um, he finds Polly's body. He's like, no, Polly. Uh. Polly? God, Polly. Shit. Polly. The bad guy at the top of the cliff. This is so stupid. The bad. Oh, our guy's at the bottom of the cliff. Yes. The guy at the top of the cliff tells his two henchmen, get the truck, go down there and get him. Take the truck down there, bring him back to me. Where does that imply where the truck is? Up there on the top that of the That implies the truck's up there? Yeah. Awesome. A cut? Our hero swings out of a goddamn tree! <laughs> Take the truck down there, bring him back to me. Kicks one dude out of the back of the truck. Like fucking Batman. <laughs> breaks out the rear window and nooses the that, dude. That scene, that moment was kind of cool. That was, yeah, was, you know. was kind of cool. But like this yeah. guy, he just teleports. He teleports to the top of the cliff and then swings out of a tree like a fucking... Uh, <laughs> Jawa, not Jawa, uh, Ewok. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, a Jawa swinging out of a tree would be cool, Woo though. Tee -dee. Woo -tee -dee. <laughs> <laughs> the next scene where we're is his him at his radio. Yeah, studio? well, but, but yeah. I got to talk about how the scene ends because it, to get to the radio station, he's driving away in this truck. Yeah, a car pulls up in front of him with a bad guy in it. He runs into it, and then the scene fades out and fades back in, and he's at work. I'm like, what? <laughs> He ran into, he crashed the, all right, I guess they were like, well, we don't feel like writing the end of the scene, so we're just going to fade out and fade so in at the next scene. He's at work, and let's say, let, let's just say that he's distracted, yeah. or rather distraught. Yes, at the death because Polly has died. And what we get in these few lines of his interaction <laughs> oh, with his boss yeah. is probably the greatest acting I've ever seen put to film. Play loops all day? Or are you even gonna answer the phone? Marty, I'm gonna need a couple of days off. Maybe more than a couple. His <laughs> his acting is on par with either either Maple or Birch. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. You could you could light him up and smoke a mean rack of ribs with him in this movie. Well, let me know if there's anything you want. Mindy? Yeah. Thanks. He's like, oh, and his boss is giving him shit for being like bad at his job, not being all there on his job. And it, uh, I love his name. His DJ name is the Parole Violator. It's 92.3 KSJO and the Parole Violator coming at you. We have some more heavy metal rock and roll by request. Again, we get no. That's th here's the thing. That's not a great name. No, that, but that would be an interesting if they ever talked about why he was like if that was like a real thing in his past where he was on parole for something that could be a setup for why he's able to murder all these people but they don't ever talk about it they just call him the parole violator Killed once six men in prison right yeah uh, or like you know like he was who knows you could come up with a, a backstory that is, it would, ties it into would that be better if he was like at one point a cop 
Yeah. Because well, he knows He's friends cops. with cops, so it would make sense, but they never fucking say that. I was like, well, all right, fine. Um, and I love his assistant chick comes in, or it won't be another DJ, I don't know. And I was like, you know, I hate 90s fashion, but I'm kind of into this <laughs> Like what she's she's wearing denim overalls and like this yes. weird multicolored bra underneath and I was like, I all right, I'm into that. <laughs> it's Indies. not bad. Oh, and then uh, but luckily Uncle Nasty's gonna come in and cover for him for a few days. I think you need a break too. You should ask Uncle Nasty. He could always use the overtime. The other DJ at the radio station who we meet at the end is named Uncle, Uncle Nasty. Nasty. Jesus Christ. This is your Uncle Nasty. No, don't like that. So Ric Flair sends the uh, his goons to go to Polly's funeral to kill the other witnesses. Oh God, we are met with the greatest cemetery oh. scene ever! Oh my God, okay. this movie has a lot of great moments. In it. <laughs> this this is the budget problems where I was like, yeah, <laughs> okay. So let me get this right. For our main villain, is it Kane? Right? You are yeah, willing. Kane. You are willing to afford for champagne in yeah. every, every scene, scene he's in. You, know, you look beautiful oh, this evening. How are you? Ready when you are, Mac. Every scene he has, has a bottle champagne. of champagne. Yeah. Got them champers. I'll save the bottle of champers for the big night. I'm sure I can resist its charms till then. Whoa. In this scene, in the in the cemetery, all the tombstones are fake. Yeah, made of styrofoam. <laughs> And they have like a giant cross that's also yeah. made of styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. I love, so we're introduced to Polly's dad, Blake, uh, who's an ex-cop. He got kicked off the force for drinking too much, and he's drinking at this funeral. He's got his little bottle he pulls well, out. He has reason to. Yeah, <laughs> but so we're introduced to him, and uh, basically Blake's like, I want you to get those guys. Garrett, I want you to get the people who did this to my son. And I'm like, why can Garrett kill these? Why are you sending Garrett on a mission to murder these people? What about? Okay, fine. Um, but as the, at the end of this funeral, uh, also we're introduced to the detective guy who shows up, who's like, I didn't find any evidence. And he's like, you're not trying. And it's like this thing where like the official detectives aren't doing their job basically. Is and what have you done to find my son's killer? Whoa, whoa, back up, Pops. It's been a week and you haven't got shit. Listen, Blake, forensics turned up nothing. What he's saying. Yeah, so they, they need to justify Garrett's actions. Yeah, they got to justify Garrett going after these guys. So then then the bad guys show up. And and again, he sends Blade and uh, Vinny, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Uh, there's, the, Luke is the one with the ponytail, and Blade's name is Vinny. Right, okay. So he sends Luke and Blade to go kill this guy. It's like our fat friend is finally going to get a proper burial. And I'm certain his Rambo buddy is going to attend, so I want the both of you to be there. Pay my condolences. But it's not Luke and Blade who show up no. at the funeral or no. at the at the funeral. Um, they probably couldn't be there that day. Yeah, the they have time. an insert shot yeah, at the they end. Have of an insert shot where they're watching this happen from across the street. Like, look like it worked. No, oh, shucks, couldn't get them. Yeah, you're absolutely right that they just couldn't make it to that day of filming and they only could shoot in that like lot for one day. So they're like, well, we got to make sense why they're not here. But, like they're clearly at like a city park or something yeah. like that. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So the guy shows up and there's a gunfight. He shoots Blake, uh, gets gets shot. And I'm like, why would they shoot him? I also love when the guy walks up, he's holding flowers and the gun, but he's not like hiding the gun with the flowers. He's just holding flowers and a gun. <laughs> it's like, okay, and he shoots what? Blake. And I'm like, again, why would he shoot Blake? He doesn't know the guy's dad. He's like, what? Cause they tell him, go and kill the guy who was there. Like he assumes Garrett will be there, mm. kill him. Why are you killing random people at this funeral? <laughs> okay, fine. Blake! Um, and then we cut to a, a sex scene and we get that long ass 90s butt. Long butt in the 90s. Name a more iconic duo. Uh, the girls all have that high-waisted underwear that makes their torso slash grundle area look like it's eight miles long. Fish. 
But this is TJ is fucking this girl. Yes. Garrett calls him and is like, hey, Blake got shot, and TJ's a cop. And he's like, I need your help. Look, I can't just make myself a cop, all right? I, ha I have to be a DJ. So yeah. you're the cop. <laughs> you're a cop. Yeah. Uh, and then he gets dressed, and I was, and he shows up, and I was like, oh, yes, high-waisted, high, high acid-washed jeans to the rescue. Oh, my God. <laughs> this was, the, the, TJ's wardrobe in particular, I was like, how is that clothes that a, a human person wore? Because the 90s, Kyle. <laughs> That's how. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie. He did remind me a little bit of Ryan from Ryan's Bid. Robbers took place over the last six months. All of them matching the same MO. Also, Blade, I love, he, he wears a trench coat like the whole movie, but he has for his giant knife, he has a sheath. Is that, is that a Bowie knife? I don't, I, I, maybe, I don't know the proper name for it, but it's fucking huge. It's like, you know, a foot mm -hmm. long. And he has a, sh he fucking has a sheath that he wears it around in. Um, it's kind of amazing. We get a nice little scene where our villain does classic villain things like drink champagne and play a piano. I'll always expect the unexpected. What's more champagne? Uh, and so they're setting up a new heist because they need to get more diamonds to replace the ones they lost, maybe? I don't know. So they're setting up a diamond heist. Um, and they have... Uh, they're, he, so we didn't talk about it, but uh, Kane is, is, has a, a client or is working for a guy, and I can't remember his name, who basically is going to get diamonds from him. And, and Kane's like, yeah, I'll get you the diamonds. And uh, But he after those get stolen, this other guy's like, uh, my guys are going to come help you because I don't trust you. So you got to have a Mac, I think is his name, is going to help you. Good. And I guess you won't have any objections to Mac here assisting in your efforts. I like to think of Mac as my insurance. And they're, they're planning their next heist. And Mac's like, we're not going through the front door anymore. We're going through the ceiling. The plans have changed. No longer will the heist be taking place through the front door. We'll be going in through the roof. And they're like, what? The ceiling? He's like, yeah, the ceiling. And then we cut to the heist. We don't see them do anything. They're yeah. just in the building already. It's like, yeah. okay, great. Thanks. Also, there's an actress who plays the, the assistant for the detective, and she's really bad. Forensics found these on the rocks about 20 feet from where Polly's body fell. Oh, yeah, and here's that file on Louis Misanti you wanted. So they break into this jewelry store that looks like it's clearly like in like an office building. <laughs> like, it, it's so stupid. And I was like, okay, first things first, jewelry stores don't leave all their valuable shit mm -hmm. in the display cases mm -hmm. at night. I don't know. It I, goes into the vault. It goes into the vault. But no, all of the diamonds and everything are yeah. just in display cases that they just break open and get into. But at the last display case is great. They're trying to get into it and they, they can't, can't break it. God! And I was like, first off, you have guns. Yeah. So just shoot it. Yeah. No, four dudes just wailing on this glass case. Uh, yeah. Uh. But as they're trying to get this last case open, the cops show up, and this is where we get like a million gun cocking sound, yeah. insert gun cocking sound dot wave. It's just like, uh. freeze! Just constantly. Um, and there's also just a random couch in the middle of this jewelry store. It's in the middle of the jewelry what? floor. There's a fucking couch. They're like, all right. So there's a big shootout. They get away. Uh, most of them get away. One of the bad guys gets left behind, and it's and Blade shoots him or whatever because he's like, sorry, can't can't let you snitch on us. What the fuck you doing, Luke? Gotta go, Joe. And then they go up to the roof to try to catch him or something, and they they can't find him. And and they they are TJ and the other detective argue with each other because the other detective's mad that TJ's working trying to help Garrett. Or it doesn't. None of that matters. Now that the party's over. You mind telling me what's going on? What are you talking about? Looking for Garrett. If you two fuck up this investigation, you're both going down. You understand me? Then we get introduced to Polly's sister, Carrie, the love interest. Uh, opening shot of her Look. is just legs. Look, I know you're grieving, but you know, give me a Let's fuck. Why don't you stay here? And make yourself comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I know your brother just died, but. We fucking right. 
And then, uh, so they're, they're, Garrett and TJ are discussing some stuff, and they come up with this brilliant plan because he sees that an office across the street from wherever they're sitting is for lease. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to rent out this office. And again, this is the stupidest. Th- I, this whole plan doesn't make any sense. They're going to rent out this office to basically tr- uh, set up a fake jewelry store so that the bad guys will come. Do they have money for that? Right? They rent an entire, and it's like the place, this building is like this huge, nice building in the middle of like a crowded shopping district. And they rent this building just to set up a fake jewelry store for a sting operation. <laughs> I was like, how did you afford this? Maybe he, maybe he sold a couple of those diamonds that they got in the beginning. Um, so they set up a, a jewelry store, and I love to, they set up so many threads in this movie that never go anywhere or mean anything, which like this one, they set up this jewelry store, or they, they're getting ready to set it up, and, and as they're, he's like, comes up with this idea, he's like, oh, we're gonna set up this jewelry store, and he turns to TJ, he's like, hey, you still got that surveillance system? Still have that security surveillance system? Yeah. Why? We're going into the diamond business. And TJ's like, yeah. So they're, I'm like, oh, well, good. Because no other jewelry store had a fucking surveillance system. So I'm guessing you're dead. This battle definitely... Are you alive over there? You look like you're fucking... I'm good. <laughs> like half asleep. Am I? You were like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a booty shot. I don't know what that matters. Oh, and then they go to a restaurant, and this is one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen in a film, and we gotta talk about this. They go out to dinner. Hey! Hey. You say we get some Chinese food? Mmm. How about Mexican? And they walk in, and I love when they walk in the front door, the the fucking host is like, coming in to eat tonight? Hey, Garrett. How you doing? Daniel, coming in to eat tonight? Yeah. There you go. No, no, just, just came for the sight. Yeah, just coming into this restaurant to hang out. I don't know, like, okay, yep. So they go in, and they go upstairs. They're going to sit on the balcony. And I love the guy's like, uh, can you order for me? I want two chicken tacos, is how he says it. Would you take my order? I need to use the bathroom. Yeah. I'll have two chicken tacos. And then he's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And then he walks downstairs, but he doesn't go to the bathroom. No. He pulls up and hides and gets a menu. Yes. Like he knows they're coming after him. Such a weird person. Why does he know that they're coming in this in this in this moment? I, it's I like so to strange. imagine that he doesn't know and he just like <laughs> wanted to like <laughs> skip out on him. He just he just ditched her and he's like, I'm gonna go downstairs and fucking eat. So then he's as he's sitting there. I love this. He sets of his fork on a cup next to him, and I'm like, why did he do that? That's weird. And then so the bad guys walk in the front door, like they do. Yeah, just because they know he's there. Again, none of this makes any sense. They walk in and they walk over and they see him and they like pull down. They do the the uh, uh, last crusade where they they push the newspaper <laughs> newspaper down. down. Yeah, yeah. pushes menu down. <laughs> Ready to order? Couldn't talk. And I love the guy goes, I seem to have dropped my fork. I seem to have dropped my fork. And then, no joke, he slams the fork with his hand that's sitting on a cup, like on the lip of a cup, like this. He hits it and launches it <laughs> into his neck. I seem to have dropped my fork. <laughs> Jugular of the bad It's amazing. And then we get a fight scene that is just incredible. The grunting sound effects of this fight scene are amazing. Yeah. We get slow-mo knife spins. Also, okay, so what it looked like two bad guys walked in. And there's our guy. All of a sudden, there's like 80 people fighting. Yes. Yes, there's a whole bunch of guys who are not connected to this at all. No, who just start fighting. They start fighting the bad guys. They're like, who the fuck is this guy? One of them gets stabbed. (laughs) 
stabs a random bystander in the stomach with a knife. Like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it's just random citizens, like really upstanding citizens are like, we gotta do something, let's help fight these guys. It's fucking amazing. And I love to, so then the waitress comes up to the balcony and she's like, you're gonna want your food to go. I think you're gonna want your food to go. To the girl, and I'm like, what? She's like, why? And I'm like, why? Because they're murdering people downstairs. I love the waitress is like making, she's like, you might want your food to go. Not like, run, run, people are here murdering the people. Fight, the fight literally explodes to the balcony. Yeah. And the entire action of that this woman was given, like her entire direction was, no matter what, sit in this chair. Yeah. <laughs> sit in this chair. And then I love too, there's a great moment. So the, the bad guy, I think it's Blade or something comes up and our good guy and all the, all the furniture on this balcony is like cheap plastic patio furniture. He picks up a chair and to slowly tosses it at the bad guy and he kicks it out of yeah, midair. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. It's so stupid. I love it so much though. Yeah. And then they just start breaking all the plastic furniture uh, and then <laughs> Uh, he gets our good our, our our hero gets drop kicked off a of second store balcony. <laughs> yeah, and, and then he gets up like it was almost yeah. nothing. Yeah, he gets up like Ugh. all right, and just runs away. Yeah, I was like, he just drop kicked him off a of second store balcony, and that's weird because I thought it was 1998 when the Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell and he plummeted 16 feet through the announcer's that's table. Four, four years later. Oh my God. So uh, basically, at one point, our uh, uh, Garrett goes to the the radio station and gives them a commercial <laughs> for his jewelry store, so that they and tells them to play it every hour, so that these guys will come and rob. What? His, yeah. The hell. Yeah, that's their great plan. Is he puts a radio commercial for a new jewelry store, and the jewelry the commercial is like, we have millions of dollars worth of diamonds, literally just sitting there. It would be so easy to rob us, <laughs> like. Not a clue you went to jail as you save at Diamonds, where we've got millions of dollars in inventory of loose and exotic stones ready to move you that? Heard of low prices. Yeah. Uh, Blade explains how desperately he wants to be called Blade. <laughs> Blade. You call me Blade. I want to be called Blade. I'm not calling you that. Vinny, how long I know you? I'm not calling you Blade. And then so our guys start setting up the jewelry store. It's just the two main characters, TJ and uh, and Garrett, setting up this jewelry store. And I was like, man, it's a good thing bad guy or uh, jewel thieves never case a joint. Yeah. But they do. <laughs> but they don't recognize that it's literally the guy they, I was like, wow, this seems like a flaw in your plan. You're setting up this jewelry store for them to rob, but you're the person there doing it. And if they come see you, they'll know it's a trap. They do come see them, but still don't realize that it's them. It's so fucking stupid. There's the cleaning crew, two security cameras, no security guards. This is gonna be easy. Uh, and But they had set up their, and again, so they're, they're, they talk about like, oh, we gotta set up these security cameras, right? Uh, and they they spend time setting up the cameras and showing us setting up showing them setting up the cameras. They have zero place zero. Yeah. They, they, they do don't nothing. Do anything. Nothing. Literally, the guys walk in, unplug the security system, and that's it. That's it. Let's go. What was the point of all? Oh, okay, great, great, this great. Guy, this guy had the, um, the guy who unplugged the security system is this, like this, this yeah. young kid that comes out of pretty much nowhere. Yeah, he's just a new but guy. But he has like this little, little bitty tiny ponytail in the back of his hair. It's pretty <laughs> it great. It's terrible. It's pretty great. And then, uh, then we get the jewelry store robbery, which happens as a, all good jewelry store heists in, in broad middle, daylight. Yeah, in the middle of the day. Literally, 
you can see out the windows there's cars driving by everywhere there's people it's like a busy shopping center and this guy's in trench coats breaking display cases and i'm like man you guys are really good at this um Again, it's one of those things that they did during the day because that was the only time they could shoot it. Mm-hmm. They wanted to shoot it at night, but they could only shoot it during the day. Um, also, I'm pretty sure TJ and uh, Garrett are playing War <laughs> or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, they're, just, they're playing like War on a cooler. Yeah, yeah. I'm like they're, they're, I think they're playing nondescript card game because one of them is dealing cards out, like flipping cards over, and the other one has a hand and is looking at it. It's like they're playing two different games. I was like, what are you guys doing? All right. Uh, so then our, uh, they, they go to bust them. They're like, oh, they're here. They're breaking in, and they run, and our guy, <laughs> Garrett, runs and jumps through a window for no reason. No reason. No reason. <laughs> other than they were like, it will be cool if you jump through Look, a window. We bu- we rented out the space, all right? We leased the space. Yeah. We spent a bunch of money turning it into a fake jewelry store. Yeah. I need to make sure that we destroy this stuff, and so we can't get, like, our deposit back or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going shopping? We're closed. And he jumps through the window. He jumped. My favorite thing is he jumps through the window into the middle of the store, and all of the bad guys are shooting at him. None of them hit no, him. No. It, I mean, it's classic like '90s action movie where none of the villains can ever hit anything, and our hero kills every single person in one shot well, they every all have time. A stormtrooper. Hand. Yeah, they really do. Uh, TJ gets stabbed. <laughs> and dies. Yeah. Jesus, Vincent, you're so messy. And that's the end of TJ. I feel like that guy had to hey, get out hey, of the movie. I, I, I can't continue shooting. All right, I, I got another job. Yeah. I got a Pepsi commercial yeah. that I got, got to do. As if drinking Pepsi wasn't rewarding enough, now they have a gotta have it card. You ever heard of Pepsi City? It gets you great deals on everything from Reebok shoes to- Again, this is one of those moments where we don't get to see the good stuff. He, he you see TJ yeah. stab and then it immediately cuts Cut. outside and Cut. we hear him and scream. He's coming, he's like, he's bleeding, he's like, yeah, okay. All right, great, great. So many times things like that where that's the moment where you want to see him get stabbed or something, you know, like. Artistic choice. Yeah, okay. right. Oh, it's so fucking dumb. Garrett runs up. He's like, ah, TJ. TJ, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, pretty great acting. Just, just get a good zoom in going with the hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he doesn't give it nearly as much as Raphael did in uh, <laughs> that movie. No. No, TJ, <laughs> you are my friend, and we did the case stuff. <laughs> We made the jewelry store, <laughs> TJ, no! Uh, um, also we we get... went 50-50 on the deposit, now I have to cover it myself! <laughs> and I smashed that window when I thought that we were going to be able to pay it together, but now that you're dead, I'm not going to be able to afford it! And I'm really regretting jumping through that window! <laughs> it's an incredibly dangerous <laughs> and stupid. <laughs> Um, uh, we get great 90s cell phones. She has a car oh, phone. God, yes. Come on, Garrett, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, Garrett. She pulls out a car oh, phone. And my mom, my mother had a, uh, had an old Motorola, the type of one that you had to plug into the cigarette lighter. Yeah. To work. Yeah. Dude, that was, that was back in 95. This, like, this was entirely a blast from the past. Yeah. And I was, yeah. the whole time I was like, I remember this. I remember this. Those who think getting a car phone is not for them, whatever the reason, haven't kept up with the booming industry of cellular radio telephones. He, so they take, they take, uh, uh, Carrie gets to the jewelry store and they kidnap her, mm-hmm. is what happens. And they take her back to the bungalow or whatever, yeah, the yeah, villain's bungalow. God. All right, she, she, and she, it's not like she's just walking into the jewelry store or anything. She's driving by it. Yeah. And they stop her and then pull her out of her car. Garrett is now on a crusade yeah. to get to to not only rescue her, 
Also, maybe get the diamonds. Maybe get the diamonds and go on a cruise. Um, He's able to track them without being noticed at all. Nope, just follows like, him there. Hey, remember that vehicle, that wo- remember that woman's vehicle that we took her out? Yeah. Yeah, we're just not going to notice that. Oh, yeah, it just followed us and drove up to our fucking uh, a villa in the middle of the countryside. Whatever. Um, he, he goes up, and the first guy outside is a guard, and he's got a shotgun, and I love this. Again, the sound editing. Uh, so they've been using this reload sound effect constantly. Freeze! Our guy comes around the corner, and he kicks the shotgun out of this guy's hand, and when he kicks the shotgun, it makes the reload sound effect. So it's a new efficient way to reload your guns. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. Oh, it's so dumb. And then he breaks this guy's neck because of course he does. And then I love this fucking moment. This movie, at some points, I feel like they were just like, ah, fuck it. They, he walks up and there's a guy on a balcony. <laughs> yes. This is, a, this is a <laughs> mid- <laughs> unbelievable. So he takes his gun and just whips <laughs> it up at the guy. Like a boomerang. Hey. Hits him in the face. He picks, he grabs his Kicks gun him. as it's falling down, and behind him is a dummy that falls, and it is just glorious. Oh, it's- hey. It's one of the best scenes if, in the if, whole movie. If the entire film had been that yes, tone the whole yes, way through, yes. this would be just yeah. great A material. It is, because it is truly like this ridiculous comical thing out of nowhere. Like the movie's been pretty serious up until this point, like trying to be like an action movie. And this is absolutely like something out of fucking, uh, um, what's that movie uh, uh, with Val Kilmer? <laughs> Ooh. But anyways, if it was all like that of him like throwing guns at people and just like over the top nonsense, this movie mm-hmm. would be a lot better. Um, but yeah, I could not believe it. He throws and it knocks him unconscious. Yes. <laughs> knocks him unconscious. <sighs> hey. But he's climbing up to the second yeah, floor gets up to the second on a floor. windowsill yeah. that you would just think like, oh, somebody, somebody is noticing him. Nope, they're all just oblivious. And I love, too, he gets inside and blades in the room. And what do you do when you have the drop on a guy? What do you do when you have the drop on a guy and you could just kill him? You go, hey. Hey. (laughs) And he turns around and is like, oh. Oh, okay. This fight scene between him and Blade is amazing. It's very special. Yes. Let's put it that way. Very slow, very uh, choreographed, clumsy. Yes. Lots of knife swishes. And there, you could, there's, you could definitely tell in this situation, uh, whoever they rented this place from was like, don't, do not get anything dirty. No. I want everything pristine. Yeah. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Which is why how this ends is uh, so anticlimactic. It's so dumb. So what happens, the guy's holding the knife out. Blade is holding his knife out. And our guy kicks the blade part to tilt it towards him. And then kicks the hilt into his, into his face. face. But it's off camera. All off camera. And we don't see any of it. Again, this is the moment where if this movie was better, you I don't even need to see the it going into his face. I just need a quick shot of him with a knife in his face going, ah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like just a quick shot of like a, a just cut, cut off sp- knife just in it with some blood. And they're like, ah, like just a, a second. But, but as we've known, as, 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 as hypothesized that they don't want any blood or anything because no. the shot of him later yeah. is in a, such a position where you can't see his He's face. He's like, oh, I got stabbed in the face. Let me lay on the ground like this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so you can't see what happened to him. Uh, uh, and then more people shoot at him and none of them can hit him. Uh, 
Um, and then, but he gets her, and they run away, and they jump off the to the construction site of a mansion. Yeah, a mansion is being built, and I feel like that was like the whole thing for this movie. They're like, we got this sweet set that like one of our friends is like doing uh, is building a mansion up in the hills, and they're gonna let us shoot there. So we got to figure out uh, a plot for a movie to get us there at the end of the thing. So they run away, um, and also it makes no sense. They total their car, and and they're driving away from, and they're getting chased by all these people. Mm. And they crash their car off a cliff and they're surrounded by tons of people with guns and they all run up to the car and they're just they're gone. gone. Ah! They're gone! Okay, cool. Uh, and they ran away, and then we get more bird sound effects as they're running up to this house. It's no eagles this time, but the birds are just like super loud. The fucking I was like, why are they so obsessed with birds? Why are the birds so loud all the time? So then I was like getting really hopeful. So they run up to this this mansion that's being built, like you said, and they're gonna hide in it. And he sticks her in a cabinet. <laughs> it's like, here, stay in this cabinet. Oh my god, there's so many of them, Garrett. Yeah, I counted about ten. How many bullets have you got? Three. Oh Make them count. And I was really hoping we were gonna get like a Home Alone, like... I thought they were hoping they were gonna do cool stuff with like the fact that this is like a construction site. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was hoping they were going to do cool stuff. Kyle Six, he has to be playing this stuff constantly. <laughs> I got to play with it. Um, I was hoping they were going to like do like uh, nail guns and like, you know, like, yeah. or, like and some me- do interesting stuff, ways. Interesting stuff, where, but not no, really. No, no. I'm going to smother you with plastic. That's the only thing that's like kind of interesting because it's like a thing there at least, but mostly he just shoots people one time and kills them. Mm. Oh, or drop kicks them off balconies. Because there's a guy, they're on a balcony and there's this guy and he sneaks up on him and the guy, I love it, it's so badly choreographed. The guy when he sneaks up on him is, there's an opening in this balcony and when he sneaks up on him, the guy's not by the opening. And he's like, oh, oh shit, wait. Now kick me! <laughs> well, anyways, we get all the way up to the point where he's coming face to face with Luke. And so yeah, that's also, the- yeah, he because he kills a bunch of people. I love that every time anybody gets a drop on him in this in this scene, it's people without guns. Everybody that has a gun, he sneaks up on them and gets the drop on them. Anytime somebody gets like, gets close to him, it, they have like a board or like, or try to strangle him with plastic. I'm like. Why did the two guys that are able to get close to him don't have guns? Okay, great. Um, They're now duking it out and both of them just karate. <laughs> Yeah, the, the or, or dude. Mar- yeah, I say karate. Not martial karate. Yeah, arts. some sort of martial arts. He's doing like the claw hands thing or something. And they do. They, they, it's a great moment where they, it's the cliche thing where they they have their gun to each other and they're like. drop the magazine out and then eject the bullet and they're like let's do this they're like men let's settle this with our fists and they fight each other it's so fucking stupid but i love they're like this is the, they felt so cool when they shot that because they they both put their around the corner they put the guns and the camera it's all in like one shot and the camera's spinning around them and they're spinning in circles with their guns to each other's face it's so fucking stupid uh, the the choreography the fight choreography at one point he kicks the the long-haired dude gets him onto the ground and then just looks at him for a minute and then tries to stomp him and the guy gets out of the yeah. way <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, but then he uh, he breaks the guy's neck eventually, <laughs> like he does everybody. He, yeah, exactly. He gets him onto these boards. He breaks his neck, and I love the sound again. The sound effects as this guy's laying there and there's blood coming out of his mouth. You can hear it's supposed to be like the blood dripping sound effect, but it sounds like a faucet running. <laughs> It's like so much blood when there's not that much coming out. Yeah. Uh, it's hilarious. But he's there's Kane has uh, the girl. The he girl. found her. Yeah, and he's taking her up to the roof. <laughs> but and this is a, so stupid. There's a point where both of them run fire, out of bullets. They run out of bullets, yeah. and they're both trying to feign that they have. Them. Yeah. They both uh, put their slide back because their slides catch and they're like, oh shit, I'm out. And they both put it back. And I'm like, it's too bad that Carrie doesn't know how guns work because she could just run away now. Because like he shoots, he's shooting, he has Carrie and he shoots and it runs out of bullets and then he releases his slide and puts it back. I'm like, if she knew how guns work, she would know like she could yell to the guy and be like, he's out of bullets. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's really too bad. Um, but she just accidentally falls off the roof. Yeah. He's dragging and her what, back. What kind of weapon does he pull out? Oh, I don't fucking know. He's dragging her backwards and she falls off the roof. And then so now it's mano a mano and he pulls out a giant staple. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's yeah, some sort of weird. Like, I thought spike. it was like a corkscrew that like that's what it looks like unfolds and then like has blades on the side. I don't I don't know what the fuck it is, but he pulls out some sort of weapon and they're fighting and it's stupid. Uh, but he cuts he stabs him in the arm. He stabs our hero in the arm and but ultimately our guy ends up winning and yes, he shocker kicks him off the roof or whatever or no he falls off the roof and then our guy goes to save him I guess and he, but oh, no. because he's bleeding he's covered in so much blood. Is yes. Like, oh no, I can't get a grip. Yeah. Whee! And so, kind of, the villain killed himself, if you think about it. Yeah. I love this. So, this whole time, uh, Carrie's hanging off the scaffolding. And this is so stupid. It's the last thing in the movie, but it's yeah, really it's like, annoying. Literally, move her. He does nothing! Six inches. He does nothing! He. Yeah, she's hanging there. And he walks, and she's like, help, I'm gonna fall. And he walks down, and he grabs her hand, moves it hey, hey, three inches to the right. There's footing over yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> and then she just climbs down on her own. I thought he was gonna pull her up. Or, no. This is your Uncle Nasty. You'll never believe what has just happened. No, no, no. He literally just was like, hey, hey you could climb down. She's like, oh, 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 okay. oh okay. Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> All right, great. We get a uh, and then we get a old nasty. Uh, right? Uncle Nasty explains what happened, which is uh, he's been convicted. The parole violator's been convicted. This is your Uncle Nasty. You'll never believe what has just happened to me. I have been sentenced. That's right, a life of working the day shift while your old friend, the parole violator, has been convicted to serve a life sentence to spend life in paradise. <laughs> in paradise. Right on, bro. Credits rolling. It's him and uh, the carrier like hanging out on an island or something, and that's the end of the fucking movie. I. I, d I, will, I have to go bad, bad, I think. Yeah, if, it's so close, though. It is it is really close. What would have saved it if, if because it is like an, if they would have went f instead of. It's like an hour and They 40. could cut out 10 minutes of this yeah. and make it much more, make it much tighter. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing for me that, and the reason I can't give it good, bad is because they cut too many corners. They did. Like if yeah. they wouldn't have cut as many corners and they would have given us a, the good, uh, you know, like when, when fights end and the guy gets stabbed in the face, show us that. Or when people fall off, show us, the, show them landing. And when they fall, everybody just falls off camera. You know, like you get like the first half of a good stunt. You don't get the last half of a good yeah. stunt. Um, and a lot of shit like that, where it's like, it's almost there, but just not quite. With it's like it's it's you're, you're giving us a bunch of Jordan with his fading jump. Yeah, but you don't show us. Yeah, you don't show in. the shot going in. So we're yeah. like, oh, all right. It's like, oh, yeah. All right. They're on their way. 
that's the end of this episode. Uh, as always, you can support us on Patreon.com slash GB or BB uh, and get access to all that good stuff. We will be, um, we're recording a new, uh, right after we get done with this, we're recording a, a uh, question and answer session where people, we let our patrons, we put up a thread every month or so um, and people submit questions and then we answer it and we have all kinds of different about pretty much anything. So also, how did you get into this in the first place? Did another show inspire you? Did you see a really crappy movie and think it would be fun to review? Uh, so the reason we got into this is we started this podcast mm-hmm. called Kyle Hates Everything. And which apparently I do. Yeah. Uh, it was originally we were doing a podcast called Kyle Hellies Everything, where the idea was that Kyle would just rip on things, and then I would try to defend them or something. I don't even remember really what. But the it just was. ended up. It ended up just being hated too. Both of us ragging on things like uh, we talked about Prometheus and the Transformers movie, and it was basically the show at the time. The podcast was, and and you, if you're a patron, you can listen to. We have the episodes up um, of Kyle Hates Everything. They they basically were this show without video. Uh, also, you can buy our merch. Buy that merch. Yeah, Kyle awesome sporting the shirt. Uh, yeah. He's got the phone yeah, case. Awesome phone case. I got a coffee mug and a pillow somewhere. And um, but anyways, uh, tpublic.com and then just search for good, better, bad, bad. Uh, por- pro- uh, portion of all the proceeds go to us and support the channel. I have a podcast called This Film Is It, where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the movie Willie will have talked about is. Hey, Katie. She's gone. Uh, (laughs) I don't know. I know the one after this, the one coming up and when this is out, uh, we're about to get into the big one, Lord of the Rings, as we're doing the whole series. So uh, look forward to that soon. Kyle, you got anything going on? Not necessarily. Uh, still waiting for my Bigfoot film. To, yeah, your Bigfoot movie, that, which out. has been name changed th- yet again. Yeah, it's been name changed again <laughs> to a great name. So it's initially it was uh, the first name that I know that whenever I was yeah. starting with was interviewing inter- a monster, interview right? with a monster, interview with a monster. Then it became interviewing monsters, which is when I saw it, that's what it was called. And now it is interviewing monsters and, and Bigfoot, Bigfoot <laughs> which sure, I guess yeah, they needed to get the Bigfoot tie in. I uh, yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, I know there's going to be another screening soon, yes. uh, which is exciting. Um, I'm interested to see if they've changed anything. <laughs> uh, apparently they are pretty much done. They're, they've already been in negotiations. Well, but I mean, like, do you think they've changed anything from when I saw it? I don't know. <laughs> I just hope they left the moon moving. <laughs> I hope the moon is still shaking in the sky on that one shot. I hope so badly. Uh, but anyways, uh, interviewing monsters and Bigfoot. Look for that sometime. <laughs> Uh, until that, uh, that time, next time, um, keep watching movies. And honestly, uh, you could probably Maybe, watch. Yeah, you could, you, this is definitely rough watchable. cut. It's watchable. It's bad, watch. bad, but watchable. Rough cut. Maybe a rough watch, but watch it. <laughs>